Right, so um, good evening, um, dear delegates, psychonauts and meta cartographers. Welcome and thank you to other folk, which was accommodating enough to include this year's the third Crockland Symposium. Thank you to Belinda and the other artists in whose company I'm delighted to find myself. Um, about this presentation, due to the obvious uh, crocodilian connection to the current global pandemic and um, our work um, on how the Delta strain may have affected the giga reptilian life form we all base our existence on, uh, we intended to name this either the 2021 Pfizer lecture or attempt to get the John Johns Hopkins Resource Center on board and um, somehow into the name, but um, both our legal and PR teams uh, strongly advised against this, largely because they were not going to be very forthcoming with funds and also because it would strain our future working relationships <laughs> way beyond Delta. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, we were left without endorsement deal again. Um, so if you're missing the Moe and the hors d'oeuvre, um, you know who to complain to. <laughs> <coughs> but in keeping with current demands in the science industries, Crockland Research Institute again demonstrated flexibility so that in keeping with the general theme of other folk, we are happy to now brand this paper as the 2021 Terence McKenna Lecture. I'm not really all that hopeful this will translate into an actual sponsorship deal, but our philanthropy department is working this in every direction, so wish us luck and maybe next year there'll be French champagne. Um, right. A quick introduction um, of myself. I'm Dr. Dr. Walter, Head of Research, Department of Metaphorical Geology and Infographics here at Crockland Research Institute henceforth referred to as CRI, and uh, let's dive right into it. I'm aware that many of you uh, are up to speed with the work here at CRI, but I will give a very brief recap for the newbie delegates. The founding of CRI was, of course, the logical consequence of the game-changing realization that we live on a very large crocodile. So enormous, in fact, that it constitutes literally the entirety of all the land we see around us and live on, which is, of course, why no one had noticed it for ages. The obvious local example being the hills of Mount Kutha over yonder, which are, of course, really just some of the many ridges on the Croc's back. Since CRI's founding, several aspects of crocland research have crystallized these are mainly cross-disciplinary research involving local indigenous dreaming song lines, as these people seem to have retained continuous awareness of the rainbow croc for at least 60 to 80,000 years. Then, of course, the Schrödinger's croc situation. Is it alive or is it dead? Where the live croc scenario leaves us with three main problems. One, is the croc just doing its thing, sitting, waiting, possibly for entire geological epochs to then one day do a death roll with us and all our stuff on top of it? Which would constitute no less than, in the words of Terence McKenna, the end of history, or indeed the transcendental object at the end of time. Problem two ethical and deep ecological consequences resulting from the large-scale resource flogging of a dead croc, if it turns out to not actually be dead. And thirdly, this was the focus of last year's H.P. Lovecraft lecture at the second Crocland Symposium, um, our research in crocosomnambulism. If the croc is sleeping, is it in fact dreaming? And if that was the case, as last year's recording data of ultra-low frequency waveforms strongly suggests, what is it dreaming of? And even more importantly, would these giga reptilian dream frequencies have any kind of influence on the individual 
or indeed our entire society, collectively. That's where this year's Terence McKenna lecture picks up this thread of our research here at CRI. Based on the premise that the world is made of language, our team of mytholinguists, evolutionary cartographers and forensic narrative analysts are continuing their research in line with McKenna's hypothesis that, and I quote, we are inside some kind of engine of narrative. There is a plottedness to it. Some have suggested you can even see the thumbprints of editors on our reality if you are truly paying attention. If you are a devotee of the theory of stochastics and random unfolding of events, then you have to look very carefully at how unrandom, mythical, and archetypal most people's lives actually are. In fact, ordinary people's lives, everyone's lives, are touched by deep magic. The primary datum is experience. And then the models are built backward from the primary data, without prejudice, in an attempt to transcend historical momentum. In the course of looking at my life and other people's lives and narratives, I think the secret to taking hold of one's destiny is to understand that one is a character. You can launch your story. End quote. And this, dear delegates, is where you come in. At this third revision of Crockland Psychotopographical, Having already launched the collective story in the form of this map, we will continue recording and now invite you to populate this living document further and enter your primary data, weaving it into this narrative of our land, our country, Crockland. So to conclude the 2021 Terence McKenna Lecture here at Other Folk, I now ask you to mark, inscribe, and record onto the map of Crockland a relevant cartographic icon, feature, an inscription of a landmark and or phenomenon pertaining to you and or Crockland society. Back at CRI, our team will then evaluate this data for indications of meta-reptilian influence. Like in the last two years, our experienced cartographers will transcribe your markings in ink, uh, very much like the ones already on the map from last year's symposia. Uh, sorry, the last two years' symposia. Please leave your contact on the accompanying sheet if you want to be kept in the loop about future revisions and showings of the map. Um, there is an info sheet with suggestions of a range of data which you could put on the map. But just before you get into it, one more thing about the other documents. These are the original artist's impressions of Crockland on vintage pre-World War II maps, which are for sale. So are limited edition prints thereof. Support our ongoing independent research. Collect them all. <laughs> Do it for science. Funding applications are really hard to write. Also, there will be no judgment of artistic capability, levels of realism, or anything like that. All we ask is to keep in mind relative scale and refrain from graffiti. Any questions, please refer to the sheet of guidelines near the map or ask me. Take your time, have a beer, come back to it later, or maybe even tomorrow or Sunday, 10 to 3. Thank you very much. Over to you.